This is Lab Medicine Rounds, a curated podcast for physicians, laboratory professionals, and students. I'm your host, Justin Kreuter, a transfusion medicine pathologist and assistant professor of laboratory medicine and pathology at Mayo Clinic. Today, we're rounding with Dr. Eric C., chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. C. Uh, Dr. Kreuter, thank you for inviting me. This is going to be an interesting and fun uh, event. Absolutely. So this episode, we're really kind of continuing this celebration of celebrating the laboratory. And so I wonder if we could kind of get into this by kicking off with, you know, from your perspective, uh, why is it important to highlight the presence of the laboratory in current medical practice? I mean, I think it's always a good time to sort of remind people that the laboratory, you know, is is there to provide you know, services for our patients. Uh, I think the number is bandied about that, uh, you know, 70% of all, you know, medical information comes from the laboratory. Um, and so, you know, we have a major role in providing data, actionable information to our clinical colleagues to make patient care and treatment decisions. And so, with such an important role, it doesn't uh, help, uh, you know, it hurt to get uh, in front of uh, people and raise that awareness again that we we are uh, a part of the care team. Right. I like how your answer really highlights this is by maybe playing this role that it's kind of, I mean, when you say it's providing 70% of the information, <laughs> that's pretty substantial. Uh, but then also to talk about it's a reminder, I guess it's, it's easy to kind of be um, always counted on to be providing these results in a timely fashion. Uh, oh, certainly. And I, I, I think, um, you know, I, well, COVID pr- pr- was a huge example of getting lab front and center, and I certainly raised the awareness and at other institutions I've been, you know, the awareness that, you know, at some point in time, the laboratory touches pretty much every single patient in their journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's not a lot of specialties that can say that, right? Uh, so um, one of my colleagues here says, you know, we we are involved uh, in healthcare from cradle to grave, uh, and that actually uh, uh, is to some degree true. Yeah. So, so that makes me wonder. You know, I'm I kind of everybody. I think really enjoys hearing uh, stories, and I'm curious about your story of how you first kind of came to understand and appreciate this extensive role that that the laboratory plays in medical practice. Uh, that's a you know, great question. I, you know, I was, I think there's, people come at it from different, you know, vantage points. And I, um, I was not one of those persons that, uh, you know, grew up and said, oh, I, I, you know, I understand what the laboratory does in a hospital. And, I, you know, that wants to be me or, my, you know, my, my parents were not pathologists because we run into those, you know, those, those types of people too. And uh, I, I came out of more out of a s- interest in the science background. My dad was a chemist and, and I, you know, was a chemistry major and I sort of gravitated towards laboratory science, but didn't really understand uh, until um, really in medical school that the laboratory played an important, you know, role uh, in, in medicine. And it, and it truly wasn't until I had taken a year off from medical school and did, you know, basic science research uh, and then came back and already then realized like I really like laboratory and I knew there was a laboratory um, component uh, in in hospitals and so then I decided to do a pathology rotation right and and because of the research I was doing and I was on in in, uh, on the the part of what they rotated you through was hematopathology Mm. and you know that first day I basically knew oh that this is what I I want to do because my research was in immunology and lymphoid biology. And, you know, I was sitting there with a lymphoma expert and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And I'll, it's just like the light bulb went off. And I, then I knew that, uh, you know, pathology lab medicine was going to be the way I went. Wow. So that, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, a nice, nice kind of point to highlight then for our students that are listening about, you know, certainly there are rotations you do in, in different places, but uh, understand that, you know, Dr. C really kind of came to it uh, from uh, the research uh, angle, I think really helped kind of magnify and put things in focus. And so it kind of, I guess, I guess the takeaway from there is to always be open to opportunities and look to connect the dots. Yeah, I, I think, you know, have an open mind, being curious, 
uh, always uh, will will help you uh, uh, in in that regard. So, you know, now in your role uh, as as chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology, uh, you know, you're you're kind of really in a, a key uh, leadership role, and uh, you know, that's an area that maybe for other physicians, some of our physician listeners or laboratory professionals, that's a role that many aren't used to thinking about. So I'm kind of curious about how, how do you and your team uh, work together to, to really affect patient care? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you, pathology, you know, um, it, it, you learn to be a leader because you have to lead within the laboratory, right? And you you have to start you know, organizing people to around common goals within the lab to, you know, raise the quality, develop the new test. And I think um, as you go through your career in pathology and lab medicine, you understand that there's roles um, in, in that medical leadership of the clinical laboratory. Uh, it gets to the exact question you want, you, you, you raise is, you know, how do you work with the team then to further the, uh, the impact of laboratory practice uh, into the clinical practice and how do you, you know, stay abreast and work with people that stay abreast of the most recent developments. I am, uh, you know, very brand new to Mayo Clinic. Obviously, I knew of Mayo Clinic for my entire career, um, but I, I am new here figuring out, the, you know, how to operate in this environment. But, you know, one thing that is immediately clear is that there are, um, you know, leaders in the field and pretty much every specialty in lab medicine and pathology. And, you know, these are the places where you can have uh, a large impact by pushing the boundaries, doing innovative tests, working with a very sophisticated medical practice. And it's that kind of marriage of, uh, you know, being on the cutting edge of technology, AI, automation, to really uh, improve patient care. And that's, you know, what the, the focus of, of a place like Mayo um, really sort of lends itself to that singular mission. And um, it's been nothing but a pleasure to be here so far. You know, if I can put a couple of things together, I think, you know, in the earlier answer, you're talking about uh, the important role of, of curiosity and always remaining curious. And then now in this answer on how you're working to affect patient care, you're talking about, uh, you know, leadership, uh, building bridges, pushing the boundaries, advancing innovative practice. Uh, I'm kind of curious for, you know, what are your thoughts about for our maybe student listeners or kind of young faculty that are curious and, and want to cultivate those skills of, of leadership and working in this direction, uh, what advice do you have for them? Well, that's a great question. I, I would think, as you say, you know, be curious, have an open mind, uh, understand, um, that especially nowadays, that you can't do everything yourself. Working in teams becomes very fulfilling. Uh, you can always do more in a, in with a team around you than 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 by yourself, um, and that you know, particularly those interested in pathology and lab medicine as a career um, is that it's so diverse. I mean, pathology and lab medicine is all of medicine, right? We are the consultants to other physicians and, you know, you can do almost anything in laboratory medicine for, in pathology from, you know, being a forensic pathologist to uh, doing HLA testing <laughs> Uh, to hematopathology, to, you know, focusing on GI pathology, to clinical microbiology. I mean, it is all of that. Uh, and you can find a niche for yourself and develop that um, that interest. So, you know, going into pathology and lab medicine, making that decision seems like, oh, I've decided my specialty. But still the entire world of medicine in a way is still open to you and you have to you know, decide if I'm going to specialize and what that's going to be, what, what do I like to do? Um, and so it's a really, uh, it's a really nice uh, place to be when you, when you understand um, that, you know, the possibilities remain open to you, no matter where you go in your career. I mean, leadership lab, in, in 
that, that kind of um, um, role is also open to you. So, yeah. Maybe. And also, I wonder if I can flip it around to the other side and think about advice for our clinicians that are listening to this podcast. And maybe there are clinicians, uh, hopefully if they're listening to this podcast, that they, they are aware of, of the role and thinking about the role of, of laboratory medicine, but they might share it with their colleagues. And so for, for the listener who maybe hasn't thought about the role of the laboratory in their practice, um, what would be your advice for how to kind of approach uh, building that bridge maybe more explicitly in their practice? I think maybe some uh, clinician listeners may not understand where to start. Yeah, I would say, you know, please reach out, contact us. We we don't bite. We, we love. In fact, I, part of our, you know, uh, pathologists can, oftentimes are introverted and, you know, we need to be brought up, but we are always happy to, to consult and, you know, lend our expertise. Um, you know, we become part uh, integral parts of the care team. Uh, I think that's one area that we, as a field, uh, our next big push is to become a little more integrated in front and center in, uh, in the care team. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, uh, one of the, th my hobbies, and, you know, is sort of, uh, you know, in lymphoma pathology, you know, I got involved in some uh, clinical, um, you know, research groups and uh, research foundations that, you know, um, deal with certain kinds of uh, lymphoma. And um, it's a patient advocacy group as well. And so, you know, what's, you know, having pathologists get out and speak to patients um, is another avenue that is really satisfying because patients are also curious about laboratory testing and their particular results. And so that's another, you know, uh, way that um, pathologists may not have not traditionally been involved in part of the care team, but that's certainly uh, was a, a very fulfilling uh, exercise for me. Other pathologists actually are involved with that transfusion medicine people deal with, you know, more directly um, with patients and things like that. So I think, um, you know, as, as, as we, as a field develop, you know, our next frontier is really to get a little more front and center in the care teams. Wow. So that really leads into my final question. I was wondering if we could kind of close out, you know, you're you're obviously in a very key leadership position and you've already kind of tipped your hand a little bit for uh, where do you see the future of the laboratory? Where's where is the laboratory headed? If you could elaborate a little bit for us. Yeah, that's a, a great question. Yeah, I, I maybe I'll do it a little bit. That was a good segue, I guess. But I think there's other um, as we move forward in um information because i think at the end of the day yes we're doing all these testing our laboratories are generating like we said you know a large chunk of the information being used to treat patients but at the end of the day it's information right and so how do we leverage that information in new ways to add to you know the, the diagnostic decisions um we're even talking about, you know as, as you may know you know mayo clinic has been digitizing its entire glass archive for over you know millions of slides uh, which is great, but at the end of the day, okay, so now we've just put the information there. Now what we need to do is figure out, you know, how to unlock that information and get new data from the archival, you know, image data that we we have. And that's that's certainly one of the new frontiers, you know, leveraging, you know, AI, machine learning, um, um, digital pathology uh, on one side, helping to automate things. And then on the other side is just, as I just mentioned, you know, getting the people and the, the, the um, lab professionals, you know, more front and center in the care teams with mm -hmm. that new information that we bring. Right. Right. And I almost, as I hear you listen to your answer there, it makes me think about, uh, meaning making is kind of the the phrase that kind of pops up in my mind of, you know, we have this information, but what does this mean? And I think, um, you know, I, I really that that mission you're talking about, about getting the pathologist uh, more integrated with the care team really resonates with me. Um, what do you think is might be uh, our biggest challenge? with that uh, step forward into more of those, that clinic uh, domain? Yeah, well, I think it's, um, you know, part of it is, you know, workforce and kind of like keeping people interested in going into the field. 
yeah. as you and I both know, it's getting harder and harder to uh, find people that get into the field because, you know, there's so many things people could be doing. And, and how do we make sure that people understand there's a super interesting career path that is contributing to health uh, of the population? And, and you know, uh, how do we keep the, those people interested? And then how do we continue to develop the skill sets that we need uh, in terms of, you know, um, information management and computational pathology, which is kind of the new buzzword, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and build those skill sets into the training program so that we can continue to grow as a specialty. I think those are things that we will be trying to figure out over the next uh, coming, you know, decade. Well, wow, that's a great way to close out. That makes my medical educator heart go pitter patter to hear you bring in the close. Where is the laboratory going to talking about uh, the people uh, in our community of practice and, and how we're training them? Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. C. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Happy and, lab week. <laughs> and thank you to the audience uh, for joining us. Uh, we invite you to share your thoughts and suggestions by email. Please direct any suggestions to mcleducation at mayo.edu and reference this podcast. If you've enjoyed Lab Medicine Rounds, please subscribe. And until our next rounds together, we encourage you to continue to connect lab medicine and the clinical practice through insightful conversations.